The whole purpose of this little video is to talk about trailer setup for the Carolina Classic 25. This is a relatively heavy, heavy rig, uh, fully equipped, probably about 9,000 pounds, maybe a bit more. And um, setting up a trailer for this boat is uh, significantly different than if you were to put an equally sized boat, outboard powered boat, on, on a trailer. Mostly because of the center of gravity. But let's talk about capacities first. If at all possible, select a trailer with uh, three 7,000 pound axles. Those would be six lug axles. Um, preferably with brakes on all six wheels. Uh, the reason for this is when you're doing traveling and towing, you're going to find that um, unless your trailer does most of the work, the truck is going to take uh, a lot of stress in the brakes. Um, probably the next most important thing is the coupler. Uh, this is a Demco coupler uh, rated for 20,000 pounds. Uh, it's important that the braking system, which consists of a pair of shocks and a set of springs and a master cylinder, be designed for the weight of the boat that you're going to put on the trailer. In my case, um, I bought this trailer to use. It had the wrong master cylinder and the wrong springs in it, and when I contacted Demco, they gave me the right setup, and I do mean gave. It was free of charge because they didn't want me running with, with the incorrect uh, springs and master cylinder. Um, and now the, it, it's very well balanced, uh, meaning that uh, when I go coming down a steep, a steep incline and I touch the brakes on the truck, the coupler sets the brakes on the trailer and I can actually release the brakes on the coupler on the on the truck and let the trailer do all the braking coming downhill. Uh, another important step was what how to winch. What are you going to use for a winch? After a few trial and errors this turned out to be the best solution. Um, it is a strong arm winch uh, made by the same people who make a whole lot of hand winches. It is a strap winch meaning it does not use cable. It is important not to use cable. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but because of the load of the boat, when you're cranking it onto the trailer, the cable will cut down into the wraps on the drum and bind, and you will be stuck uh, with almost no solution to unload or load. So forego cable winches, please, and do the strap winch. Now, the other important thing to note is the, winch, the strap winch, the strap that came with this winch, was a 2,000 pound rating, which is not enough. Uh, ditch that, pull it off, it was 25 feet long, toss it, buy a 10,000 pound strap, and cut it short. Um, you do not need a lot of strap to pull the, this, this boat onto this trailer, or any trailer. Uh, when set up right, you can hand push it right up close to the winch and um, then hook up. Uh, it's important not to wrap a 25 feet of strap on the winch because the more wraps, the bigger the diameter of the drum, the bigger the diameter of the drum, the less torque the winch can apply. So the minimum amount of strap is best. I cut this one to 10 feet. Six would be better. I only use about three. And I'll this show is a that demonstration way. of what I was talking about earlier on balance for the trailer brakes. Uh, and the tow vehicle given the weight of the boat um, since the Carolina and the trailer weighs twice as much well not twice, one and a half times as much as the truck does um, it's important to have a, the proper balance now in this case um, on this relatively steep grade with a very sharp turn I'm going to step on the trailer brakes hard set them and get off the cuck brakes altogether which I am now uh, so the trailer brakes are doing all of the braking as we go through this corner, um, which allows us to take it at a very slow speed, yet not uh, put any significant load on the, on the truck whatsoever. On a Carolina Classic 25, the center of gravity is relatively in the center of the boat, as opposed to most outboard powered boats where the, uh, much of the weight is behind the transom. This means that you must locate the boat differently over the axles. In this particular case, um, 
while I pushed it back quite a bit, uh, it's still a little bit forward. As you can see, the bunks are right even with the front edge of the trim tabs. When I purchased this boat, the bunks came back beyond the trim tabs. Uh, the tongue weight was approaching 2,000 pounds, which is excessive. And um, uh, I basically shortened up the tongue by cr making a new cross member. The cross member used to be here, and a tongue used to end here. I put a built a new cross member and moved the tongue back in. The difference, this amount of difference. Uh, as you can see, I still have about four inches of of. Uh, space where I could move that winch stand back and it probably should go back although it's trailing really nice right now uh, forward bunks look like this this hardware is available oh from probably almost any trailer trailer manufacturer uh, basically you're gonna have to tweak it now, these weren't anywhere near right um, as far as their shape was but I've matched them to the shape of the bow as, as, as close as I can and, and they work pretty well now, as I'll demonstrate when I go to load. Bunk, bunk, length, height, and positioning. Uh, here you can see these bunks are actually beams. They're cedar beams. As cedar resists rotting better than most, most woods. Uh, here you can see the bunks are lifted up on the cross members, on the cross members with a three inch spacer. Now, it's ideal to have the boat as low as possible, and you can see there's quite a bit of clearance between the cross members, the drop cross members, and the, and the keel. However, there's much less clearance between the fender and the chine. So I, I suspect those spacers were necessary to get adequate clearance so that the boat would not contact the fenders in, in the act of loading. Um, we'll talk about bunk spacing and, and dimensions in just a few minutes, but as you can see, you have to plan for both clearance around the fenders and around. We're setting up for single-handed launching here. Basically, we've taken the, a long line, attached it to the bow eye, flipped it over the top of the feed roller, down into the and piled loosely on top of the spare tire. The, the bitter end, double half hitch to the winch stand. The chain is removed. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna back down the ramp here in just a few minutes. This is the main reason why I believe you need 7,000 pound axles on a Carolina Classic. Uh, very steep ramps, like like many, and this one included, have a bit, what is essentially a flat platform with an extremely steep ramp. When you're backing and loading, the rear wheel on your three axle trailer is almost entirely unloaded, uh, and this one will completely be unloaded when I come back about another foot or so putting all of the weight of the trailer and the boat on the front two axles. It's conceivable uh, that that could overstress 3,500 pound axles.
thank you very much. Your name was? Bob. Bob, nice to meet you, I'm Rod. Okay, specifics. Now that we have the boat unloaded, let's take some measurements on, on the bunks, placement, size, etc., etc. Starting with the main bunk, I'll get out of the sun here, which is a beam. I'm supposing uh, originally a four by uh, ten. Uh, four by ten inch cedar beam cut on a um, diagonal that matches the hull shape, which is basically 24 degrees. So the outside of the four inch beam is the standard uh, nine and a half. The inside is more like seven and a half. So you get about a, got about a two inch drop. Eh, maybe a little less than that. But but it, do the math, figure out what it should be, and cut it accordingly. The beams, outside to outside, basically 62 and uh, roughly a quarter inch from side to side. Length. Uh, these are quite long. In fact, the front edge isn't even doesn't even see use for all practical purposes. Oh, 140 inches, which is basically 11 feet 8 inches in length. Note how the beams are attached. I mentioned earlier the spacers, but there are a pair of L brackets on either side uh, that are U clamped um, through the spacer and through the cross member and then through bolted right through the edges of the beam. There are at least two bolts uh, on every on every one. Sometimes the center ones have three, I believe, and the back ones have three. I don't know why this one is different, but looks like they're all mounted Although that way. Although this says uh, 10 feet, eight and a half inches, I would add another inch and a half to that. So 10 feet, 10 inches, um, because I'm on the edge of the roller rather than on the center part where the bow eye will strike. Um, so roughly, roughly 10 feet, 10 inches. And I do believe that these bunks are a little further forward than they have to be, but that's all right. There's plenty of support. And um, if I do move that winch stand back, the remaining four inches, of course, this will shrink to more like 10 feet, six inches. These are the bow bunks. Basically two by sixes carpet over with bunk carpeting material. They are 48 inches long. Eight. Um, how far apart depends on where your bow is positioned. You'll be adjusting these with these adjustable anchors. Uh, but as far as the distance in front of the main bunk, we're going to approximate that since you can't measure directly. Uh, five inches to the front of that. Thirty-six and a half. So roughly, roughly they are roughly thirty-one. 30 to 31 um, inches in front of the main bunks. The main bow roller to, that takes up the strap is 32 inches above the frame of the trailer. The front are roughly 7 inches, so there's a 4 inch incline in the bow bunk from uh, 4 and a half. Guide-on pads. Uh, when I bought this trailer, those brackets were in place, but the method of guiding the hull to be centered on the bunks was of some PVC tubing placed over the top of those steel, galvanized steel brackets, which are quite stout. Um, those, those galvanized, those uh, PVC tubes rotated as the hull slid forward. Um, and they horribly marked the fiberglass all the time. Not that they did they did not damage the gel coat, but they left streaks of hard to remove PVC embedded into the gel coat, and it took took a lot of elbow grease to get that off. Uh, and they weren't very effective uh, ultimately um, because they were too high. So I cut back the tubes and put a set of pads in, and I adjusted the height so that such that on a steep ramp like this. You just bury them. 
in the water. They're this deep. Uh, on a shallow, more shallow ramp, you leave half of them sticking out, and that seems to work in most applications, in most, most ramps. So the height of the pad, the shape and size, they do rotate a little bit. Um, they're well padded, multiple layers of carpet, so they do not damage the gel coat. I try to keep them clean so there's no uh, grit or anything in there to scratch the gel coat uh, when you're loading the boat. The height uh, to the top of the, from the, oh, this is going to be hard to measure. I would say um, from the top of the frame to the top of the bracket is 33 inches. To the top of the pad is 37 inches. Um, the pads are basically 2 by twi 2 by 10s. Uh, so they're cut off to be, I think, 18, 16 inches in height, both sides. Uh, since I've gone to this, it is so easy to load this in any kind of wind, current, surf, whatever. Uh, the boat is these once you load the boat the first time you adjust these by kicking them in until they make firm contact with the sides of the hull and as you slide the boat in the back end is controlled and you're walking forward and setting the bow on the bow bunks and uh, the amount of strap I have showing right there is about twice what I need to venture up tight so we'll load in a little while and I'll demonstrate that tires um, my trailer used came with uh, 225 75D 15s bias ply tires that were rated for 2540. Um, so, two of those per axle meant I had 5,080 pounds per axle, or roughly 15,000 pounds for the whole boat trailer and gross vehicle weight. Um, I got rid of those and went to uh, 225 75R 15 radials. Um, these are 2830. So I have an additional 600 pounds of capacity per axle, meaning my when I'm loaded up with just two axles, I have an 11,000 pound rating on two axles, which is helps when you got to come over a steep, off of a steep ramp onto a flat plateau, as mentioned. As far as fore and aft position of the bunks, uh, I mentioned how far away they were from the main bunks, but the bow bunks are 48 inches roughly from the front edge of the bow bunk to the uh, take-up roller on the winch. Um, that's going to be uh, uh, variable from boat to boat, trailer to trailer, depending on your setup, but that's pretty close. That's from the take-up roller, not from the bow roller itself. So, say 44 inches or 46 inches from the bow roller. Um, don't skimp on the connections. Uh, that's a Fulton 2,500 pound uh, jack. Um, there was a 1500 pound on there and it was just uh, coming apart uh, because of the pressure. One being way too much tongue weight on the original setup. Um, this one works very well. Uh, I have um, a uh, forklift super hitch which is rated for 15,000 pounds uh, draw weight and 1500 pounds tongue weight which I probably was using every bit of that. Um, but that's a solid bar, <clears throat> rated at 10,000 pounds. I think that's as high as they go. Strong arm winch uh, has its own battery. That is a uh, maintenance-free battery set in its own thing and wired into the charging system on the truck. So as you're going down the road, you recharge the battery for whatever usage you did to load the boat. This, this winch has some nice features. Uh, this is a clutch. So it's engaged right now. If I want to disengage it, I throw it forward. I can draw a cable out, however much I need. Um, it does electric four and a half loading. Uh, has a disc brake. When it parks, it parks. Uh, I've never had the boat pull anything out. Although, once I'm loaded and chained up, I'll throw the clutch out momentarily, take any stress off the, off the belt, off the mechanism, and off the winch stand, and then re-engage it so uh, things can't move. That prevents shock loads from affecting the mechanism inside the winch. Um, the winch does come with a with a emergency handle if for some reason your battery Self-loading on a trailer, in my opinion, consists of 
having two lines constantly rigged to the boat. One is a um, I guess that's about a 25 foot dock line rigged to the uh, front gunwale uh, cleat and to the rear cleat which I added so that I could hook up and unhook quickly by myself. Um, this is where, how you tie up. The other line is a uh, 35 foot um, what you might call a leash <laughs> it's hooked to the bow eye it allows you to control the boat um, and it's it's only used for that it remains on board all the time it helps when you're tying up to a dock to pull it over to the dock etc etc on steep ramps we have to go pretty deep uh, taking the those guides like I mentioned earlier so they're just a wash the reason for that is primarily so that we can get the um, the uh, winch stand and the winch itself low enough so we're not pulling the boat uphill on the bow ramp so we can float it on all the way and that's what we're going to do now I just may be a little bit difficult to film but I'll give it a try basically we're going to walk her on using our leash rope slide between the, the guide arms heading the bow for the bow bunks building enough momentum as she rides right up in the bow bunk that close to the winch. Uh, unfortunately, there's no help here but for getting your feet wet. So, what the heck. A little water never hurt anyone. Clip on. Winch in. up to the eye just touches the roller that's all you need okay we're up and out and uh, I'm gonna show a few shots of how the um, bunks line up with the hull you see from behind here you can see that the outer edge of the bunk engages the, the uh, one of the one of the chines or strakes or whatever you call them coming back from aft, and um, it sits about oh pretty much even flush with the outside edge, and the guides pretty much do the same setup for both sides. There's almost a quarter inch overlap on this side, uh, but nothing on the other side. And that's why you need the angle cut on the bunks. You get that surface area, which gives you security. Make sure that your load stays.